Drinking wine and beer all the week Time for whiskey on a Sunday Well, hello everyone. You are all very welcome to join me for this latest installment of my weekly Instagram live series, Whiskey on a Sunday, with me, Some for All. So the official countdown to St. Patrick's Day has indeed started. Only 17 days away. Dear Lord, it's coming fast. So with that in mind, I thought it's only proper that I take a virtual trek back to the Emerald Isle for this week's tasting. Now, truthfully, the whole month of March is synonymous with all things Irish. We all know that. So for the next several Sundays, I'll continue to showcase some of Ireland's own Ishkabaha, the water of life, or as we know it here, whiskey. So as always though, just before we dive in um, to the whiskey chat and the whiskey tasting, I do need to remind anyone watching who may not yet be of legal age to purchase or consume alcohol where they live to now sign off. Bye bye. All right, so for everybody else, let's go. So now thanks to the very fine folks at Cork Wines and Whiskies, they're an Ontario based agent and purveyor of quality wines and spirits. I'm able to showcase Hyde's number no. six, 1938 Special Reserve Irish Whiskey. So, small bottle, let's hope it's big on taste. Sure it will be. Now, in case you've never heard of Hyde Whiskey before, you're, well folks, you're in the right spot if that's the case. The Hyde brand is a relative newcomer, you know, relative newcomer to the Irish whiskey scene, and they're also a little bit different in how they operate. So Hyde Whiskey is affiliated and a part of Hibernia Distillers. And that was started back in 2015 by brothers Connor and Alan Hyde. But to be clear, because there has been some confusion on this out there over the last few years, presently Hibernia Distillers are actually only bonders. Right, so this means that they're using whiskey made somewhere else as their base products and that they currently do not distill and they currently do not produce any of their own whiskey. Yet, gotta, gotta put this in here, they do have plans um, that are in place to install stills and make their own stock in the future. So, you know, saying Hibernia Distillers, it, it, it led people to think that they were, make, they were up and running uh, producing whiskey, uh, you know, when they came out, but um, they've clarified that, they've been very upfront about it, and they will be doing that going forward, um, that date to be determined. Okay, so let's talk about bonders and the art of bonding. Now that's certainly not a new phenomenon. Bonders were very prevalent throughout Irish whiskey's deep history. However, in this, I'm gonna call it latest resurgence of Irish whiskey over the last 30, 35 years, you know, we've not really seen many bonders and pretty much we've only started to see them recently. Now, for those of you that don't know, Bonding is essentially warehousing and maturing the whiskey. You may recall from prior episodes that I've talked about Irish whiskey's laws, which state, amongst other things, that the whiskey must be bonded on the island of Ireland and matured for a minimum of three years. Now, those, th those criteria must be met in order for it to be labeled Irish whiskey. And yes, there are other criteria as well. But bonding is part of it, and it has to happen on the island of Ireland. So most present day distillers in Ireland do the bonding and the maturing of their own products on their own grounds, you know, within their own facilities. But now there's a few folks who are going the bonder only route and the Hyde brothers, you know, there's some of them. So with bonding, once the bonder has purchased a stock from whoever, uh, and the stock meaning the, the base whiskey. Um, so once they've purchased that stock, they not only hold on to it uh, to mature it, but they're also in control of blending the whiskies if that's what they want to do. Um, they're in charge of making the decision on the type of wood that's going to be used for the casks, for the barrels, and also the maturation and length of time. So they've got some tools in their toolbox. And let's make no mistake about it. Bonding is in and of itself a very skilled art form. And in my opinion, uh, and I want to be very clear about this, in my opinion, bonding does not mean 
that it's a poorer or lesser quality of whiskey. You know, a whiskey from a bonder, um, speci uh, specifically people that know what they're doing and who are masters of that art form, you know, that whiskey is not less of quality than any other one produced or matured by a distiller who's doing it themselves. Okay, so the Hyde brothers, we've established their bonders. And they've named their whiskey Hyde. But <laughs> you may be surprised to know that it's actually not named after themselves. No, folks, rather it's named in honor of the first president of the Republic of Ireland, Douglas Hyde. Now, Connor and Alan Hyde themselves, you know, they do come from a deep lineage of family who for hundreds of years ran pubs in the West Cork area of Ireland. And, you know, with that heritage, that alone would have been an interesting reason to name the brand after their family name. But instead, they chose Douglas Hyde. Perhaps he's a long lost relative. Perhaps not. Perhaps it's done as a nod to both Irish history and politics. You know, it is often said that to be Irish is to be political. But regardless of whatever reason is actually behind it, President Hyde is the face of the brand. So this whiskey is their sixth release, hence the number six on the bottle. It's a little tough for you to see here probably, but um, there is a number six on there. And it, the 1938 commemorates the year in which Douglas Hyde became the president of the Republic of Ireland, 1938. Okay, so let's talk about the whiskey itself um, before we dive into the tasting. And I know, I know, I know, you're all thirsty, you're all anxious, it's Irish whiskey, I'm sure you're all chomping at the bit, but just, just hang with me just a few more minutes. So this is a blended whiskey of approximately 75% 18-year-old single malt, Irish single malt, of course, and 25% of 8-year-old Irish grain whiskey. Uh, and the grain is believed to be a mix of both corn and barley. Again, nothing, nothing new there with, in terms of you know, Irish whiskey. So now I mentioned before that the folks are bonders, right? The Hyde brothers are bonders. They didn't make their own stock. We know that. So you may be wondering, well, if they didn't make it, where did it come from? Well, my in-depth research leads me to believe that the single malt comes from Cooley, which is very interesting and very intriguing if true, and I do believe that that is true. Why do I find that so interesting? Well, you see, 18-year-old whiskey from Cooley would mean that it was distilled by Cooley's then master distiller, Noel Sweeney. And Mr. Sweeney is an absolute giant in the Irish whiskey world, the whiskey world as well, but absolute giant in the Irish whiskey world. He's also an inductee into the Whiskey Hall of Fame, um, you know, Mr. Sweeney is still making whiskey. He left Cooley, um, and now he's at Powers Court. And you may recognize some bottles behind me from some of the earlier episodes where I talked about his whiskey. So with that being said, 18-year-old Cooley made by Noel Sweeney. The single malt is top-notch. Check mark there. Okay, then there's the grain whiskey. So again, I dug deep. And my research is telling me that it comes from the Great Northern Distillery, um, and that's owned and operated by John Teeling. Now, John Teeling is the man who many credit as single-handedly reviving Irish whiskey in the modern day. You see, in 1984, he became the first new distiller in Ireland in many years when he opened Teeling Distillery. Um, and that opening that and what he was able to do with Teeling is, has really led to the ongoing wave that we're seeing today. So no doubt there that both whiskey stocks, the single malt and the grain, they're quality. Then there's the wood treatment. The High Brothers have double cast this one. So what that means is after they've worked their magic in, in blending the formula, their secret formula, right? They then place it in first in X bourbon cast to mature. Then they take it out of those bourbon casts and they recask it in former Oloroso sherry casts. And they've done that for about nine months. So the sherry cast has seen nine months of exposure to the stock. Okay, right. Now it's time to taste. So 46% alcohol by volume. And truthfully, that's a little bit higher than Irish whiskeys typically are. They have to be minimum 40, but we don't see a lot in the 46 mark. So 46% alcohol by volume, non-chill filtered, right? I've talked about this process a few times in prior episodes, so I'm not going down that road again. It's a bright gold in color. 
Um, there may be some coloring agent in here, but again, trace amounts and that's, that's legal and you know, I've talked about that enough before. Okay, so we're gonna go in for a sniff, do our nose tasting, right? We acclimatize our nose with three, three introductions. Hi, how are you? It's a pleasure to meet you. I hope you smell delicious. Okay, so the nose is ready. Hmm. Okay, so fairly intense right away, but it's a pleasant intensity, right? Nothing, nothing negative off the hop. But yeah, it, it's got a little oomph. So what do I smell? Well, sherry notes are front and center along with dried fruit, such as raisin, and there's some prune in here, maybe a little fig. Um, I get some citrus, like sweet orange, lemon, some lime zest. I think it's interesting with cooked banana, there's some caramel in here. Um, it, it's almost like that um, UK Irish dessert Benafé. I've talked about that before, but it's got bananas and caramel in there. And then I get this, this cereal note, you know, Weetabix, bran, honey. Um, there's a little bit of unroasted coffee bean and then a little spice, a little nutmeg. And digging deep, a little hint of powdered milk chocolate. So a fair bit in the nose. All right, so what's it taste like? Right, we always want to swirl, remember? Coat those five flavor receptors. Okay, so first up, so <clears throat> a little good weight on the tongue. So it's, it's, it's not heavy by any means, but there's some substance and it's very creamy on the mouth. A little tongue prickle, like black pepperish, and then it fades into green apple and orange juice concentrate and a little red berry. Starting to get some cereal notes now, um, some wheat, some corn, getting some honey, floral notes, and then a bit of cantaloupe melon, which is intriguing, and some grilled pineapple. Wow, okay. A little salty sea mineral, very nice, keeps everything nice and fresh. And now some spice, some nutmeg, some cinnamon, a um, little vanilla, which would make sense in the bourbon casks, uh, a little bit of mocha. And at the back end, I'm getting a little bit of that milk chocolate. The finish, soft, creamy, good fruit, still getting apple. I'm getting that melon coming through, a little grilled pineapple, and a touch of that cinnamon spice just on the back end a little bit. Okay, so what's my assessment? Well, I find this to be very interesting for an Irish whiskey. I find that there's lots going on on both the nose and the palate. And I also think it's a little bit different from the traditional aromas and flavors that I usually find in Irish whiskey. Alrighty, so if you've liked what you heard me describe uh, on the nose and the palate and the mouthfeel, if you like that and you're wondering how you can get it, well, if you are in Ontario, the best place to ensure that you can find it is by visiting the website for Cork Wines and Whiskies. So very simple, www of course, but just put it Cork Wines and Whiskies in your search engine. So Cork Wines, A-N-D, whiskies.ca. You'll not only find this Hyde 1938 there, you'll also find a good selection of award-winning and hand-picked wines, whiskies, and spirits all for you to check out. Folks there, I'd love to hear from you. In Ontario, this 1938 Hyde comes in at $77.56 per 700 milliliter bottle. So again, following that European standard of 700. Now, in my opinion, that's a very reasonable price for a very interesting or at least somewhat interesting whiskey, especially since it's really likely that Noel Sweeney had influence on the single malt used. And of course, folks, let's not forget that the single malt used here is at least 18 years old. So 75% of this whiskey is a minimum of 18 years old and that the grain itself is a minimum of eight years. I mean, when it comes to whiskey, right, we all know age comes at a price. So $77, that's re in my book, that's reasonable. If you're thinking of snagging a bottle without any undue pressure, 
I just want to suggest that you don't delay too long though, as my research tells me that there was only 5,000 bottles produced of this release. So, you know, if you're thinking about it, I'm not saying you have to do it tonight, but don't delay too long. All right. Pour mes amis en Québec, I, love, I know my producer loves when I speak French. You can find this at the SAQ, uh, stock number 1361760. Um, just go in the search engine and put in hide, you'll find it there, but that's the stock number. In Quebec, it's $79.75, again, 700 milliliters, and I still think that's very good value for what you're getting. For my friends in the US of A, now for you guys, at least on my end, it seems to be a little tougher to find, but I have seen it for a, on a, for a few websites in the US for around 65 USD. So I think we're getting a better deal up here in Canada, but again, you know, 18 year old and eight year old, 65 bucks, that's kind of par for the course. So folks, that's a wrap for this installment of Whiskey on a Sunday with me, Sam for All. So whether you're watching this live uh, Sunday night here with me on Instagram, or if you're catching this on replay via IGTV or via my Psalm for All YouTube channel, I want to sincerely thank you for spending time with me. Next Sunday, I will indeed be live again on Instagram, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'll be showcasing two other Irish whiskeys from the Hyde Collection, and I don't think you're going to want to miss that one. It's going to be fun. So folks, until next week, as always, please... Be safe out there, be well, and cheers from Psalm for All.